Hi, I'm Miss Malensky, and this is our first lesson on um, doing some evaluating, substituting, and simplifying. Please bear with me, it's my first time doing this, and so uh, hopefully I get better at it if it's really bad. Um, so the first thing that we're going to talk about today and take some notes on is math vocabulary. And uh, math vocabulary is important because so much of our directions are based around it. And if you read the direction for something and you don't understand it, then it's going to be hard for you to even get started on the actual math question if you don't know what it's asking. So I just want to cover some six pretty common terms that we're going to run into this year. And so we can kind of solidify it a little bit. And then we'll put some of those terms into practice and do a couple examples. Uh, so the first one we have is a variable. And a variable in math, it, a lot of people think of as a letter. But really, it's, um, it's kind of referred to as a symbol. But it's a symbol or a letter that can change. All right, to vary is to change, and so variable is a symbol that can change. Um, so if you think about solving different equations and you solve for x, sometimes you might get x is 2. Other times you might get x is negative 4. So that, that number for x isn't always the same. It, it varies. It's not constant. So what is a constant? Well. If a variable is a symbol that can change, a constant is a value that does not change. So if you think about 5, 5 is always 5 when you look at 5. You know that if it's five cars, it's the same amount of cars as if there are five boats, there's five of those. So numbers, regular numbers don't change. Negative two is always going to be negative two. All right, and so those are constants. Uh, sometimes when we talk about variables, we talk about coefficients, and those are important to know. A coefficient, is a number that is being multiplied by the variable. Oops, must be an arrow. A number that is multiplied by a variable. So coefficients are smushed up right next to variables. And when they are smushed up right next to each other, it means to multiply. So 2x, the 2 is the coefficient. Uh, if you have 3 fourths y, well, that's the number that's being multiplied. What if you just have a w and there's no number in front? Well, if if the coefficient is the number being multiplied by it, it looks like there's nothing there. But if we were to multiply this by zero, it would go away. So if you don't see one in front of this, or you don't see a number in front of it, it is really just a one. Uh, some people feel more comfortable about writing one W instead. And that's fine, mathematically it's the same thing. But if you're wondering what the coefficient is on a regular variable, and there's no number written in front of it, it's just going to be one. So, next, we have an algebraic expression. To pause for a minute, an expression is uh, like an equation, but no equal sign. So I like to think about an equation. It's something we seem to be a little more comfortable with, and it's like a sentence. 
in language arts, if you will. And so it has a beginning and it has an end and that's what makes it a sentence, a capital letter, a period, or some sort of punctuation. Uh, an expression is kind of like if you were to just take a little part of that sentence out. It's sort of like a, a phrase. And so an algebraic expression is really an expression that has variables. All right, one or more variables. So again, there's no equal sign, all right? So you could have something like 3y, and that's an expression. It is. It has one or more variables. It's an algebraic expression. Uh, you could have 2x minus 7. Again, there's a variable. There's no equal sign. It's an expression um, or inequality sign. There's nothing there. It's just kind of like a little blip you will. Uh, sometimes there can be more than one variable. So 2a plus 3b. Again, that's another form of an algebraic expression. All right. When we are dealing with algebraic expressions, sometimes our directions are a little different than if we were solving equations. If we solve equations, the directions pretty much say, hey, solve it. Um, when we're looking at expressions, sometimes the directions are different words. Sometimes they say to evaluate or simplify. All that is is just a different way of saying find the answer. All right, so, or solve the expression. All right. Okay, so if you see in the directions where it says to evaluate or just simplify, really you're just kind of going for the answer. It's just we are so used to seeing solve sometimes that um, this can kind of throw us off. Uh, the last vocab that I want to just talk about is simplify, or not simplify, substitute, sorry. So substitute, we are pretty comfortable with substitute teachers. Your teacher's out for the day. Somebody comes and takes their place, all right? So oftentimes to evaluate different things, you'll have to substitute different values in for the variable. And that's really what substitution is. You replace a variable with a value. All right, so again, these vocabulary words are important so that you do not get hung up on kind of the lingo of math, but that you um, can actually get into the, the content of math. Uh, at some point, I, tomorrow when you come in, we'll have a warm up, and or when you log on tomorrow, we'll have a warm up. It'll just be a quick kind of matching these up and just kind of to reiterate it. Uh, the homework tonight is really going to be about doing some of this evaluating of expressions and using some simplifying and substitution. So I'm just gonna go over a couple examples of what you might, might see tonight. So again, the directions would be to simply evaluate. All right, and the question would be something like this. 2.5p minus 4t. And it'll say 4p equals 12t equals 4 point, or 6.5, sorry. All right, so that would be our question. Now, we get to use all of the different words in our title here to solve it. First thing we want to do is to substitute. Let's take P out and put in 12. And let's take 6.5 out and put it in for T. 
or take T out and put 6.5 in, sorry. So I'll substitute that there, and I'll substitute this here. Now if you look, 2.5 and P are right next to each other, so that means multiplying. So I'll take 2.5, and I'll multiply it by 12, and then subtract 4 times 6.5. Remember that multiplying can be just simply a variable and a coefficient together. We can use the old school little x. We can use the dot that's sort of raised. Uh, parentheses as well means multiplying. Uh, so we've substituted, and this looks, this looks better. This looks more manageable. And now we need to simplify. So our order of operations say that we'll multiply these two first, and then we'll deal with the subtraction sign. So 2.5 times 12 is 30. 4 times 6.5 is 26. And 30 minus 26 is 4. All right. So when you're doing your work on this, this is kind of what I, I would expect to see. See that you could substitute it in. See that you know how to simplify down and get your answer. All right. Um, evaluating is not just going to be for these type of expressions. Sometimes we use formulas and we substitute different values in. Uh, when I was a senior in high school, I went to Brazil as an exchange student. And in Rio de Janeiro, when the temperature hits 40 degrees, there's a song that comes on and people get really excited. Well, it's 40 degrees Celsius. So from here, I, we're so used to dealing in Fahrenheit. So I wasn't really sure. So fortunately, there's a formula to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And so it's the Fahrenheit equals 1.8 times the Celsius plus 32. All right. So again, this song comes on in Rio when it's 40 degrees. So that means that the C equals 40 degrees or 40. So much like the last one that we did, we'll just substitute this in for C right there. So we can find out what our answer is, which would be F. All right. So it's 1.8 times 40 plus 32. Uh, 1.8 times 40 is 72. 72 plus 32 is a scorching 104 degrees, which I was not totally ready for coming from the Upper Peninsula. So again, tonight is going to be working on some of these things, just getting a little more comfortable with a little bit of the vocabulary. And really, it's our first official math assignment of eighth grade, so congratulations. I promise I will get better at my videos, but have a good night.